Good evening, everybody, especially to students of Deval Grace Theological Seminary or anybody else that would be joining us for another Greek lesson, uh, if you've made it this far. Uh, so, Kairete, peace to you all, or happiness to you all. Uh, hopefully your happiness won't be too far affected when we end up back at lesson number 45 again, because we're going to do some repetition. I'll show you the, the page there, which you should be starting to get quite familiar with now. Uh, and hopefully this will be the last time going through this though. Uh, because the tests that came through, a lot of people are still struggling. And I probably made the mistake of going too early when I'm trying to get you to translate from Greek into English. And of course that's really not what Bible study is about. You know, we're, we're um, exegeting from the Greek language, you know, going into the Greek language and, and trying to work out what that means and going from English into Greek, uh, it's not really part of the studies. However, as part of language learning principles, if, you know, if, if you're trying to get really familiar with the language and get your head around it, that's what uh, going from you know, one language and back to the other is all about. Uh, so it's nice to be able to have a, an English sentence, which they gave us in exercise 45, once you get down to the, rest, uh, the other part of it, uh, and then translate into Greek, because it, they're sort of showing how well you understand the Greek. Uh, though it's a bit too early for that, and probably not totally necessary. I think we should focus more on, on bringing out the English from the Greek, or, or getting into our understanding. Um, and what you probably will also know, of course, being uh, Filipinos and understanding how language works in second and third languages, is that once you become really good at a language, you actually start even thinking in that language. Um, I don't think there's many people in this world that would have a, a good level of Koine Greek where they could actually think uh, at that level, uh, or not, you know, not unconsciously anyway. But anyway, so we'll try to get to the standard that's, um, you know, some, some of you might just want to do the basic Greek and then others will want to take it to a very high level. Some of you may become scholars and, and even pioneers in your studies of that. Uh, but yeah, we're still back at the beginning. So uh, let's just go anyway from exercise 45. One last time going through it, I'm going to present a different way that we can, we can go through it to make sure that you understand this before we go on to the next exercises we're going to have new declensions, uh, slightly different forms of the nouns, uh, but of course the same principles. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to read through each sentence that they've given to us, one word at a time, saying how the word should be translated, and then what I'll do is I'll go through the, the whole sentence again, uh, just once in English. And I'll do 10 of these, and then for your homework, because I know you all love your homework, and you've got so much time for that, uh, is that you will do from question number 11 down to, it goes down to 20. It's only showing 18 here. Uh, I put this on a, uh, like on a photo slide, which is just a little bit easier for me, rather than working from the PDF. And though you do have the PDFs, which I sent through to Messenger. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this, like exercise number one here. Adelphos, a brother. That's how we translate it, of course. That's that's a nominal. I'm not going to go through the different, um, yeah, you know, the verb parts. This is actually in, in its full uh, form. I guess we would say that this is uh, nominative, masculine, singular. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go explain what the word is. So this Adelphos we translate as a brother. Blepe he sees. That's literally what it means. Anthropon. Uh, anthrop Pon, a man, a brother sees a man. Number two, doulos grafe logus, a slave or a servant writes, uh, is writing, you could say, logus, words. Number three, apostoloi, apostoloi, that would be apostles, that's the plural form, didaskusen, they teach. That's the third person uh, masculine plural, didaskusen. Anthropon, a man. Apostles teach a man. Number four, 
aposteloi. Again, that's the same there as apostles. There's, there's no article, so we don't say the, we just say apostles. Luusi, which would mean to loosen or loose, or maybe free even under the context. Do loose, slaves. Apostles, free, slaves. Number five, doulos, lambane, dora. Doulos, this is a slave or a servant. Lambane means to, can mean to give or to take. In this case, I think it would mean to receive. Lambane, lambano would be the, uh, the, present, uh, the first person uh, singular. But here we say lambane, so he, he receives dora, a gift. A slave receives a gift. Lambanusen huioi oikus. Lambanusen would be they receive. We oi, hui oi, so you've got the rough breather over the iota here. Hui oi would be um, sons, and then oikus is houses. So here we have the subject here sons receive. Houses. Number seven, do loose kai ukus uh, oikus lambanusen adelphoi. Uh, how, how are we doing this? Okay, so and oikus lambanus. Okay, so here's the here's the sub uh, subject. It's getting a little bit difficult here, a little bit complex because here we have the subject at the end, which is adelphoi. And that's the nominative. So yeah, these are the ones that are receiving uh, slaves and houses or servants, perhaps. Okay, so brothers receive um, servants or slaves and houses. And remember, do loose or oikus here. This is the accusative. So this means this is the object of the sentence. So the brothers are receiving. Uh, slaves and houses. Number eight, blepomen hira kai apostolus. Blepomen, that's the first person plural of the word blepo, which means to see. So here we say, we see a temple and apostolus, this would be apostles. Okay, so because the apostles here, it's not the nominative. You have to make sure that ending there, you know, you have to know your endings. This tells you it's accusative. So it's not the apostles seeing or we apostles. You know, these are the people that are being seen. That's the object of the sentence. So here we'd say, we see temple, uh, a temple and apostles. Now, if this word here was apostoloi, that would make it in the nominative, and then we could say, and you wouldn't have to have the chi there, I guess that would confuse things. But let's just say, just for example, if this said blepomen hera apostoloi, it would be nominative, so that would be we apostles see a temple. Okay, but just like this, it's uh, we see a temple and apostles. That's plural, of course. Number nine, do loose blepete kai adelfus. And blepete is ye, it's translated as ye, which means like you as a plural, your. Uh, so you'll see servants and brothers. Notice how we've got the accusative here for do loose, so that's servants there, and the, as the object, and Adelphoi, Adelphus, playing the same role in the sentence effectively, but they're separated. Okay, but don't let that put you off. Okay, so you, once you, you sort of find where the subject is first, which is within the noun here because it's you, the ending here is your. So uh, you'll see uh, servants and brothers. And number 10, this is the last one for me before you all take over here. So graphase, logon, apostolo. Uh, graphase is you write a word, here we have the dative, so that's telling us to, just, just translate that simply, to, and there's no, uh, there's no definite article, so we just say an apostle. You write a word to an apostle, and that's how you do your homework, just try to keep the translation literal, 
And of course, you, once you find everything in there and you're translating it directly, uh, it's a very objective way of, of doing it, then you should get the answers right. Okay, but you just work it out word for word. So graph face, you can go through to the chart where you see how the, the words are written down. And you have um, like there'd be grapho, graph face, um, and the, uh, what do we get down to then? Is the uh, he writes? Uh, sorry, singular. Uh, and what is it? Um, first person, second person. Oh, so third person singular would be gra um, grapho. Okay, so it'd be grapho, grapheis, grapho, and then you have grapho men if it was the plural. And then grafete would be like you, you are all writing, and then grafusen. Okay, so uh, but that's the second person here, grafe. So you write, and then you see that's a word, no article. So just, uh, or there's no, uh, when you talk about articles, just to mention here, remember in articles and things you have a or an, and that's the what they call the indefinite article. It's indefinite. I could say, like, you know, here I have a glass of water. Uh, there's only one. You don't have to say, you know, which glass you're talking about. But then once you've mentioned that object, then you can use the definite article, the glass is on the table because you, you've sort of mentioned the object already, so it becomes definite. Uh, but here there's no definite article, but in English we insert what's called the, the indefinite article, which is a. Uh, for words that start with a, a vowel and then, sorry, ah, which, <laughs> words that start with consonants, sorry, and then and, words that start with vowels, the A, E, I, O, U. Okay, so just the last one again, you write a word to an apostle. When you see that, that that's the date of mood there, a Yoda subscript tells you that's, uh, you know, that's the singular date of. Uh, apostle loan if it was omega and then no that would be for the plural okay we just again you write a word to an apostle okay so I've given you the examples how to do the rest of them so from number 11 down to number 20 just doing as I did um, actually it won't be easy when you uh, yeah you'd have to do a video I guess it just occurred to me I thought you'd be writing it actually but no, you're gonna have to to do it how I did it and just keep it simple. You don't have to do all the explaining, of course. Um, so again, if you're doing number 11, which that's yours, not mine. So I'll go back to number one. You do it just like this. You say, Adelphos, a brother, blepe, he sees, anthropon, a man. A brother sees a man. And then you go into number two. Okay. Um, but what I would sort of recommend that you do is even if you have to write things out, make notes first so that when you do present it as a video exercise, uh, you can do it very clearly. If you make mistakes in the video, you've got down to like number 20 and you make a mistake, don't do the whole thing again. Uh, that, that doesn't make sense. So uh, if you do make a mistake, just, just stop at that particular verse and then just start again, work through it. Okay. So, um, Yes, all the best with that, and uh, I still have to announce when the assignments will uh, have to come in, but we've got the conference coming up soon, so um, yeah, maybe we should get them all done before the conference. Now, let, let me just, um, I'll, I'll post them to the, the Facebook, but it's probably, if you can get everything done before the conference, you've still got a week to do, do all your homework, and you've had a head start, so we should be able to do that. Okay, so, and we'll be seeing you on Sunday. Okay.